Measure twice, cut once might be known as a carpentry term. But lately, that reminder has come in handy at a fifth grade class in Scarborough as well. 207's Peggy Kaiser is here with more. Hey, Peg. Well, Rob and Sam, one special project is stitching together caring and calculations. Math class. Everything has a structure to it, a geometry to it, right? In Mrs. So. Trombley's room at Wentworth School in Scarborough. I love that. I love those two colors together. Thanks. Moves to the rhythm of a sewing machine. Rather than this theoretical fractions are somewhere in my math book thing, let's touch it, let's draw it, let's build it, let's measure it. Mary Trombley loves to quilt, so when a friend told her about the Homeless Remembrance Blanket Project, she was intrigued. And I was going to make one by myself, and then I was like, why not do it at school? <laughs> so it was very last minute, like, it was not pre-planned, but it became pretty awesome once we thought about it a little bit. The idea caught on fast, and soon two other fifth grade classes joined the effort. That meant... So we're going to put it upside down on top. Teaching 54 kids how to quilt. So I was like, all right, I'll bring my sewing machine to school. And with that, she set about guiding these kids through the process of creating, designing, and stitching two quilts. Quilting is 100% math, and it's all geometry and spatial reasoning and planning and symmetry and all those things. So I had a ton of math lessons I knew I could get in there. When they were independently doing their math work, they could come sew. Keep the edge of that fabric lined up. Nice. They began by figuring out how big they wanted the quilt to be, doing all the calculations to determine the size of each square in the quilt. They quickly realized that if we made um, blocks that were roughly like 11 by 11, by the time they were sewn, that would get you to 55 by 77 and we could put a border on it. So then we backwards calculated from that. Students created the designs, picked fabrics and colors, figured out measurements and angles, and carefully cut the pieces they'd stitched together. Good. And there you go. The Homeless Remembrance Project was started last year by Pat LaMarche. If that name rings a bell, it's because LaMarche twice ran for governor in Maine as a green independent candidate. She began this effort in Pennsylvania, and this year is taking it to a national level. While the kids have worked on their quilt squares, they've Zoomed with LaMarche, who has talked with them about homelessness. And she said maybe instead of thinking that they look different or thinking that person smells funny, think maybe their feet hurt. Think maybe they don't have a washing machine. Maybe they're cold. Maybe they're hungry. And so just by changing that frame of thinking and bringing humanity back into it, it's going to help these kids think more about why and how. Every state is sending blankets and quilts to the project, and later this year, some will be displayed on the grounds of the Capitol in Washington to draw attention to homelessness. There are lots of people who um, are homeless, and they're probably very, like, cold, and they probably want a blanket to make them feel so they're safer and more warm. You're doing something that's good for other people, so it feels really good. We're not just making a quilt, we're making, it's not as much about the quilt, but more who it's going to, because it's going to someone who, like, quilt things we lives. think, we kind of take some of these things for granted, mm -hmm. but not everyone has a blanket to stay warm. The kids take turns at the machine, laying out their squares, stitching them together, ironing them flat. All the while, Mrs. Trombley brings in the math this way and makes and sure the way. kids see how their calculations all come together. You're doing this with 54 kids, yeah. many of whom have never seen it. Yeah, so never seen I love this. I love, I love being active with the kids. Mm -hmm. And I love giving them a project that they can own and that takes their learning from a book and makes a product. I've like sewn little things together, like without a sewing machine, yeah. but I've never like quilted something. And it's so cool, it's like so cool that we get to like be part of this like thing and we have to, we get to have fun, but we also get to like help people. It's 100% all about the math, the social thinking, the argument and advocacy, the research, the awareness of others. You know, fifth grade is such a huge age where you're not just thinking about yourself anymore. You're suddenly realizing what other people think and what other people are noticing. And that might be just peer to peer, mm -hmm. but they're ready to now say, oh wait, if I do this, it has this effect. 
Now, Mary Trombley is quick to credit her fellow teachers for jumping on board to help with this effort, and she expects the quilts will be done in May. Pat LaMarche has promised the students that their finished quilts will be part of the display at the Capitol at the end of the year. Now, Mary sent this to me yesterday. This is a photo of the progress of one of the quilt tops. The students will end up ultimately creating two quilt tops, uh, quilts rather, for the project. And we will follow their story as those quilts head down to Washington in December. Pretty more much. energy in that classroom. Yeah, <laughs> and more than one lesson learned too. Oh my, which so is many, so great. many, it was wonderful. Thanks, Peg. Thanks, Peg.